Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in again. Today we are talking about the point cluster command. The point cluster command is a way to easily group together a set of vertices, but is the most useful for animating and deforming meshes. Um, so let's jump in and show you how it works. So here we have um, a character that I've downloaded off of Turbo Squid. And let's say that we wanted to animate his mouth or we wanted to animate some expressions on his face. Uh, so what the point cluster command will do is it will enable us to deform a mesh uh, non-destructively. So it's kind of like the pose, pose morph tag, I would say. Um, it's just kind of its own little thing. They've kind of simplified it. Like you don't have to go through the, the stress uh, of the pose morph tag. Um, so it's pretty simple to do. Um, now let's say that we wanted to maybe raise his, his lip here. Um, so I would probably grab... Maybe these points right here. Make sure we got them all. Yep. So grab those points and let's say that's, that's the cluster that you want. You want those to be a unit. You want them to, to move together. Now, of course, you can you can set that up through expressions, but it's, it's a headache. And uh, it sounds like Maxon knows that. <laughs> so they've come up with us a nice solution um, of the point cluster command. So if you go to character, commands, and then create cluster, you're going to see that it's automatically going to create a null for us as well as a tag underneath. So let's go ahead and hit it and see what it does. So as soon as it does that, um, we have a, a new null that I created here, face geo cluster null, and that's based on the, the name of the actual geometry that we have. So right away, if we start to move this, we have control. Um, it's deforming the mesh uh, based on these points. So if we go back over here, you'll see that oops, when I move this, it's also moving our points. So that's cool. But even better, what it does is it gives you this nice little tag down here. So automatically underneath, it creates a null for control. And then it also selects, uh, makes a new tag that is put underneath your object. So if we go to this tag, um, we have a few options. Um, most importantly, I'd say strength. So we can easily just say, hey, you want it to animate from 0 to 100. Um, it doesn't look like you can go beyond. Um, let's see if we can. Nope. Okay, so 0 to 100. Maybe there's a way to do it through expressions. So that's great. So what it's doing is it's essentially giving you a vertex map. So if we come over here, it's also added a, a vertex weight map for us. And we can see that by clicking on it, and we can see where our uh, weight map has been painted. So this is really cool, too, because if we want to actually go in and paint this and alter a little bit, uh, we can do that. So let's go to character, and let's go to, where is this? Ah, wait, uh, paint tool. There we go. Um, and then we can come in here, and we can just paint a little bit more. So now... When we go back over here and we go from 0 to 100, it's affecting more. That's cool. Uh, you can only get away with so much. Once you start getting too far out of the, the selected point area, uh, it starts to break, uh, which would be expected. That's cool. And then let's say we wanted to put another one on. So let's maybe do the eyebrows. So let's go to the eyebrows. And let's go here and here, here and here and then once again let's go to our face geo and let's go character commands and create cluster so we're given another uh, null that is our um, control null so now we're able to easily move it as we were before and if we go down here we can see that uh, it's created a new uh, tag for us um, I didn't I didn't label it properly, so let's go ahead and say eyebrows, and then lips. Uh, it's also created us a new uh, vertex map. Um, so we have uh, the eyebrows up here, so that's great. Uh, once again, we can alter them um, as we did before. Another option you have is to add fall off to these point clusters. So let's select, let's say, the eyebrows. And under fall off tab, you're going to see that we have options for a field. So let's do a formula field because I think this will just show it right away. You can see that the formula field is now affecting um, our deformation that we've created. 
we could also do, let's just switch this to a linear field. Let's turn that one off for now. And now you'll see when we come over here, as it crosses it, it affects it as it goes through, which is pretty cool. I mean, I don't know when I would actually use it, but I could see how there could be a need for it at some point, especially if you're if you're factoring in, um, you know, the the possibilities of fields. So that's about it. Uh, lastly, I would say, you know, this is not necessarily just for characters. You know, this could be used for anything, text, anything that needs to be deformed, um, an abstract shape that you might need to do. Um, it just kind of simplifies the process of, uh, of having to set up a rig. You know, it's, it's almost like a very simple rig that you can create um, in no time. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, and I'll see you on the next one.